let's just talk about something that most everyone lived. You were in a house with different people than you now live with. And let's say they were your parents or whoever they were in your early life experience. And you had experiences with them, which you now continue to remember. Well, remembering is just activating the vibration. Your brain is in the storage cabinet full of things. Your brain is a transmitting and receiving mechanism. So something in your now has triggered something that is a vibrational match to that. So it lights up and you remember that. Here's an easier way to say this to you. Let's say that something happened years ago with someone else. So you have the experience of that. And let's say it was an experience that you didn't like. And then let's say you get on with your life and you live more in your now and you're looking forward to more things and you're feeling better and better as you are. And then let's say that that person comes back into your life, maybe a letter, maybe a phone call, maybe walks right in. Maybe you're sharing custody of your children with them. Doesn't matter. So they come back into your experience. This is where this new approach that we are offering here today would really serve you. You have to remember that perhaps, in fact, usually you were not back then really under the influence of source energy. You were under the influence of whatever. So let's say you were having a bad experience together then. So that's what you remember. Well, let's say that you've been listening to us or others and you've come into alignment and you're feeling good and you're not harboring any of those old resentful thoughts, meaning they're not active in you. You're feeling good in your world. And then that person comes back into your experience and they, let's say, haven't been meditating, haven't been basking in life, haven't been appreciating, are not in touch hardly ever, and certainly not constantly with their source energy. But let's say you have been doing pretty good at that. In fact, you're really quite good at that. And there they are, and you're looking at them, and they're looking at you, and they're remembering you as they made you out to be them. Because everybody has a perception of everything. They never saw you as you really were. They saw you through their own lens. They made up who you were to them. In fact, who you were to them was more about who their mother was to them than who you are being to them, usually. In other words, they have already decided who you are, and they have never stopped deciding that that's who you are. So they've got quite a bit of momentum going about who they perceive you to be. And now you're looking at them and they're remembering who they remember you to be. Their perception of you hasn't changed at all. So this is the question that we have for you. In that moment, whose influence are you going to be under? You're going to be under the influence of your inner being. You're going to be under the influence of their perception of you. It really is as simple as that. Unless you've practiced being under the influence of your inner being. And if you haven't been practicing being satisfied about this and that and the other, then you might be sort of wobbly on that point. And since you don't see that person very often, the minute you see them, you might be moving back into some memories of what they were. And so as you remember what they did to you and they see you as a, all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but pretty fast, you find yourself under the influence of who you are. So you're not feeling satisfied. You're feeling defensive. We would like to take the emotional scale and all of those emotions that you might describe as negative emotion, like depression or fear or rage or anger or guilt or blame. We would like to say, try with us just a little bit here to simplify it. Do I feel satisfied or do I feel blameful? Do I feel satisfied or do I feel angry? Not trying to find the opposite emotion to blame, just that simple. Am I satisfied or am I mad? Am I satisfied or am I blameful? Am I satisfied or am I guilty? Because once you start just acknowledging moment by moment, you're going to establish your satisfaction zone. You're going to be so under the influence of your inner being that you'll be like Jesus, where you're mostly under the influence of your inner being. So much so that someone could stand before you dripping an obvious illness and you would not be under the influence of their illness. You would instead be under the influence of what you'd practiced being under the influence. And you would know their wellness, even though it wasn't evident. And then their illness could not even abide in your vibration. And so if you're under the influence of your inner being, 
Maybe because you haven't thought about that person because that part of your life is not relevant to this part of your life. It was relevant in this sense. It caused you to want more. It caused you to create more. And now you've lined up to more and now you are more, but you don't ever have to go back to those influences. There are a lot of people who stand before you and they're loud and they're sure. In other words, your parents remember you when you were insecure. Your parents even fostered in you a dependency. They really believed that they needed to take care of you. And so you sort of created that relationship. I'm the old and the wise one and you're the new and the dumb one and you're insecure and I'm secure and I'll take care of you. That was the basis of most relationships. And for the most part, your parents never stopped feeling that way about you. And so you grew up, you stood on your own two feet, you showed yourself and others what you could do. And then you go home for a family vacation and you start acting just like you used to act when you were home because that's how they remember you more. And you're under the influence of them instead of under the influence of who you have become. <laughs> Every relationship that you've ever lived, there was you and them in your physical body and there was you and them in terms of your non-physical and then there was a relationship that you had with your inner being and they had with their inner being and it varied depending on the subject so everybody that you know and you too are a sort of mixed bag of potential so if you walk in not practiced in your alignment there's all kinds of stuff that could get stirred up and then you've just brought it forward into your now different places different faces moving through your life experience but sort of the same old same old experiences that you're having with most people because you set the tone early on and you keep regurgitating year after year after year <laughs> don't try too hard to figure it out you've all heard a lot of things and you've all lived a lot of things and some of it you've brought forward and it helps you and some of it you've brought forward and it isn't helping you but in this moment right here and now where all of your power is your relationship with your inner being is what must be paramount and once you have practiced yourself into pretty steady alignment then people from your past won't be able to reactivate what used to be there they may not accept you as being different but you won't respond to them let's make it easier let's not make it about anybody else let's just make it about ourselves and let's make it about our self relationship with our broader self and let's get that vibration going and let's be the influencing uplifters that we are born to be and then let's let everybody respond to us in the way they can and let's not us get twirled up in their response because we can't control that if you don't try to get in there and fix it then you don't join their influence and so you stay in your clarity and in your power and if they want alignment and every one of them does they'll join you there but what you're observing often takes precedence and we get why you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it and others can too and they're talking about it and so you're sort of enamored addicted to what's already manifested much more so than what is in the state of becoming that's why we're talking to you endlessly about your thoughts are turning to things and from where you are you're moving toward whatever your thoughts are about and if your thoughts are mostly about what is things are always changing but if you're thinking about what is what is what is what is then things are changing to more of what is you have to think different thoughts to have different experiences this one statement that we're going to give to you may be the thing that will help you the most and that is many of them are unsoothable many of them are not in a place where they can know what you know but you just have to make the decision that them not knowing can't tie you into a knot and that's why meditating and coming into concert with the whole of who you are is the way you maintain your balance the thing that gets you out of whack any of you this room is full of teachers and healers and uplifters and the thing that gets you out of whack when you are wanting to help someone else is that you want so much for in this moment them to understand what you know and since they can't then the harder you try to make them understand and they can't then the more likely you are to come under their influence of not really knowing rather than remaining under your influence of knowing 
and it's a difficult subject you have to step back into a really general place to understand the beauty and the perfection of this process of coming into physical and moving into non-physical and coming into physical and moving into non-physical it's just the most delicious thing but you have to step back far enough to realize that and those who are still physically focused do your best to soothe but if they're not easily soothable then don't work hard at it because there are more of them often around the situation and they can get you down yeah we are eager about what's coming up next for you because we know for sure that you have moved your vibration into closer proximity to who you really are which means your relationship with everything in your vortex has now changed and your receptivity to the next logical step is going to be more obvious to you we have enjoyed this interaction immensely it's been a really wonderful time with you don't go away from this gathering trying to remember what we talked about because you've shifted vibrationally you don't have to remember it and articulate it you've got it just get into life with this one intention just a little more emphasized within you than ever before and that is I'm just gonna look for more satisfaction I'm going to find more satisfaction better said not I'm going to need satisfaction but I know that there are satisfying things that I could focus upon and that's what I'm going to focus toward and then step one is you ask and life keeps causing you to ask step two is source steps up source steps up and focuses unequivocally on what you've asked for step three is you find some way to feel a little more satisfied right now step four is you're really good at that that's all step four is step four is you like to feel good and so you do you like to feel good and so you do you're so good at feeling good that that comes first because you've put it together if I'm not satisfied I'm not in the receiving mode and if I'm not in the receiving mode I've got nothing to give anybody step four I'm really good at this I'm a master of alignment and step five is I'm having a step one moment and it's okay with me I'm not mad at myself I'm not mad at the person that's caused a step one moment because I'm an expanding being and I know that step one is necessary to that and I adore the evolution of my own desires and I'm willing to allow the evolution of my own desires and I'm having a step one moment because I was born to have step one moments I was born into contrast and I was born into the leading edge where things manifest so that in the manifestation in the evaluation in the observation of the full manifestation of all this energy that has flowed I can see the results of how I and others have been flowing energy that's all that manifestation is it's the results of how I and others have been flowing energy and I don't like that piece I would prefer this we're off and running sources right behind you in the evolution of this new improved life experience that you're all about you are blessed beings you are blessed beings you are beings who are seen and known and understood you never stand in a moment in time that source energy is not all over whatever you are doing you are never forgotten you are never not known you are never in the dark you are never not understood source is with you constantly flowing towards you and every new nuance of every new idea that you want source is flowing with you about that too and when you are not in the receiving mode source still is when you're not in the receiving mode it's not so important you're not being judged or condemned because you're not there you're being understood because you're not there you're being seen as there even when you're not there and that's why in the moment that you make your transition into non-physical you'll be right there but we just don't think you should have to croak to feel good we don't think that you should have to croak to release resistance we think it's time for you to just reach for a little more satisfaction moment by moment and come into fuller and fuller connection with who you are and be the uplifter the joyful uplifter that you were born to be